What's up guys? Today I'm going to be fixing this welder. This is a Hobart Handler 187. Um, they use the same parts as almost all the other Hobart Handler welders. Um, <clears throat> so what was happening with this welder in my last video, which I'm getting ready to post today. Um, this is your drive wheel and it was spinning just fine, but for some reason the wire was jerking. So when the wire um, jerks as it's coming off, it probably means it's hitting some interference in your liner on your spool gun. Or not your spool gun, your um, your your torch, your gun, whatever you call it. Um, so it'll hit, these have like a, a coiled steel liner. This is the replacement one I got for it. Um, and if these get bent, it'll create a little kink or something in there. And as that wire moves through, it, it takes more force than it should. And since it's like a spring, it, it has this this jerk to it and in addition to making it really hard to weld because your wire is not coming out steady it also will tend to bird's nest real bad right here because this dry wheel is pushing that wire all the way through <clears throat> um, all the way through that liner and out the gun so if there's any resistance in here it has to push really hard and it starts kinking like that and then it, it that uh, force makes it a bird cage. If you want to see an example of that, um, I can try and edit one in here. So I already got my spool of wire off because I'm going to be changing sizes. I got some heavier stuff to weld and I'm going to try and change this liner. So changing the liner is really simple. Um, you can buy these at Tractor Supply. Um, I this is a handler 187. This says it fits 180. I think that it should fit fine. They're basically the same motors. Um, but the first thing you want to do is if you haven't already, go ahead and, and wind your wire back and loop it through one of the holes on your spool so that it doesn't burn cage. Because if you don't keep tension on that, it'll go. Um, this is it's, anytime wire is cooled up, it's like a spring. The next thing you got to do is these are your leads that. Um, these are the leads from your, your button on your torch that make it turn the welder on, advance the wire, and all that stuff. So these are just little spade connectors. You don't have to worry about polarity when you reconnect these because all they're doing is completing the circuit. The next thing you do is you loosen this thumb screw right here. And um, you don't have to take it all the way out, but a lot of times it, they won't come out unless it's all the way out. Or at least you don't think they will. I'll show you why in a second. All right. So this is what the base of your torch assembly looks like. And it has these O-rings on here because those seal where the gas comes out of your shielding gas. So you can see those O-rings, they fit in there really tight and that's what makes it hard to pull out. All right. <clears throat> so this is your complete assembly here and I'm gonna need to grab a wrench although maybe we get it with a um, pair of pliers. So you will take your, which I already have because I was messing with this, but when this is fully set up to weld, of course, you'll have your, if you're watching this video, you already know you have your tip and then you have your nozzle or your shield that goes over that. So you'll unscrew this, you'll take your shield off. And if you're doing the liner, then you need to, there it is. See, I know I have a wrench around here somewhere. Um, you need to take this. Uh, they call this the adapter. Let's take that off too. I think that's what Hobart calls this. Um, <clears throat> sorry, I'm bumping you around a little bit. Okay, so our adapter's off. And then you can see your actual liner assembly poking up here. It's that spring. You come back to your other end. And you'll see this end right here. Looks like a nut. And you just separate from the rest of this assembly. What you have to do is turn that out. And this, mm, very stubborn. Very stubborn. Okay, so if you have one that's stubborn, they're usually not that hard to get off. If you pull this back, you'll see that this has flats on it. So if you want, you can, uh, you can grab it with a pair of pliers or something without having to worry about it slipping. They're usually, 
I mean, it depends, but they're usually not that bad to get off of it. Okay. So the reason this is hard to get off is because it's actually spinning that spring liner inside of the, um, the rubber jacket. Okay, that should be all the way out. They don't want to thread in that far. Yep, <clears throat> it's all of our threads out. And then you should be able to pull, um, and I'll show you on this new one. So you can see this is what your new one looks like. It has that same nut and o-ring. You don't want to damage your o-ring. And I need a cutter. There we go. So as soon as you cut this, it will spring because it's basically a giant spring. Spring steep. There we go. There we go. This one's nice and long. It's probably going to be longer than the one that's in your gun. <clears throat> I'll show you that in a second. All right. So because there's nothing on this end holding this in, this is loose. So the way to extract it is you want to take your take your torch and throw it out that way, and you're going to pull. <clears throat> The idea is you want to pull that out of this and this one is just not just not wanting to go there it goes that's how that's how they usually come out is much easier so we'll see what this one looks like when i get it out of here So if you look at this one, it looks like that kink may have actually been uh, just inside the gun. I'm not sure if I did that while I was pulling it or not. But you also got a break in this liner. And this is where you see how just that little spring is separated like that. So that can be just enough. This liner actually looks pretty good. Usually when you get resistance, they'll actually have a... Um, a big kink area and I'm gonna see if I can show you that so they get like this if that line ever gets kinked and then even if you bend it back the um, the rubber line will look like it's straight but you'll have this inside so your wire is actually flowing up and it'll be rubbing against those it makes it really hard um, make it really hard for the motor to push that wire out all right, I was just giving the air compressor a chance to fill up and have everything plugged in. So, you don't strictly have to do this, but they say to, so it <clears throat> doesn't hurt anything. You just take an air gun, blow out. You can see it blowing dust out down there. You just want to blow out any debris. It might be inside this line and it's, you can actually hear it coming out of these holes when you blow it in there and I never like to blow it this way because you're obviously gonna have more debris in that end because that's the end you roll with and I never want to blow it down where it could obstruct your gas flow uh, basically as the instructions always say um, Installation is the opposite of removal. You take your springy end, you take the end that you took out of your machine, and you start sliding her through there. And this should go easy. If it does not go easy, you may have a problem with your rubber. And again, you want to, you want to get that as straight as possible. I'll just get it started off there. But it's nice to have these laid out if you have enough room. All right, you see how this is just sliding right in? That's how it should be. be. Nice and easy, nice and easy. If you hit a little resistance, hmm, we are hitting a little resistance. Let's see what's going on down there. You never want to force it. You can see I just put a teeny little bit in there. You don't want to do that at all. Um, you want to get impatient. 
There it goes. That's what I thought. It's just the end of that. All right. So they make these really long because they don't know exactly how long your gun is. And you want to be real careful when you get down to your Teflon coated section to push it in very straight because if it rubs against this, it'll look like the old one did to rub it against it where it pulled it out, where it got all shredded. And that's, uh, this is important because that helps keep it get keep it from getting kinked in this first uh, three feet or whatever, which is where it gets all the wear coming out of the machine. And at this point in the installation process, we could be pulling from that end just as easily, but it doesn't really matter. And then you want to get your thread started in. It should start easily by hand. And then you just turn her on home. So that's it. That doesn't need cranked down. It shouldn't be tight. And that's all you got to do. And then when you go to put it back in, you feed your connector through the hole first. And you line that up you'll have to wiggle it and you'll see it's it's in almost all the way but not all the way you want it all the way in so that there's o-ring seat and that should give you plenty of room to run your spade connectors up which i'll go ahead and plug in just so i can get them out of the way push those until they they have a little um detent in them when they're all the way in that they'll almost make a click there we go Okay, and then we find our, our little thumb screw, wing screw, and this can be tricky to get started, but that one went right back in. So you want to verify as you screw this in that your brass collar is all the way flush with this block. And this is another, this does not need to be super tight. This, this stays in there pretty well by itself. You snug that up, and then you also want to verify that your liner comes all the way just off of this drive wheel and that's important the more space between the drive wheel and the liner the more chance that you have of a bird's nest which is where the wire will just go everywhere like i showed you before so because this is like i said it's much longer and they make them that way so that you have enough And then you want to cut it off so it's just flush. So this is by far the easiest way to cut these liners because they're spring steel. If you try and cut them with a hacksaw as it goes back and forth, it's going to catch that and spring it. And it's not good. So um, again, you just want to cut that off more or less flush, just like the old one was, where you can just see it. cut up it doesn't it doesn't really matter for aesthetics because it's going to be covered up i just don't want to take that off and have a sharp edge there so um at this point in time you want your adapter that's this piece and you want to thread that on by hand And you always want to tighten that with a tool. It has flats on it. Where did my little wrench go? Not sure. Not sure where I put my wrench. There it is. Okay. So you always want to tighten it with a tool because this is what your tips are tightened into. And it's a real pain in the butt when you're trying to change a tip in a hurry. And instead, this whole thing starts moving. So you can see that tightens down, that seals up. Your gas comes out of those little holes. And we'll go ahead and leave the tip off because I need to put new wire on. So anyway, that's how, that's it. That's completely done. We're ready to weld. I'll put a new swing wire on here and we'll see how it works. 
All right, so everything's done. We got a brand new spool of Hobart uh, 035 wire because I have some thick stuff I need to weld. You can see I got started through. And I'm just feeding that wire through right now. But you can see there's no jerking. So before this is going hurt, hurt, hurt. So we shouldn't have any more problems welding. And we'll go ahead and I'm guessing if you're watching this video, this step should be familiar to everybody, but we'll go ahead and find an 035 tip in your nozzle and reinstall. My tip is running away from me. So I slide these on by hand. And I got uh, a couple sets of these pliers. These ones are crappier, they're from Harbor Freight, but they are great because this narrow part here by the plier end, they can tighten these in, which I mean, I can tighten this in by hand because it's cold, but it's nice when they're hot if you're working on something. So they can tighten your wire up, or your uh, tip up. Once you get your tip flush, they have a trimmer to cut your wire flush. And then again, it's especially nice working on hot stuff. They push that shield back on there so then this is ready to go and as you can see it might be about time for a new shield for me another thing i like about these pliers if your shield gets all these goobers in it you can stick that in there these pliers have probably more purposes than any of us realize you can chip slag with them but if you beat on them too much it makes them out of square so i also have a hobart branded pair of these that are nicer but they're basically the exact same thing um, These are from Harbor Freight, probably around 10 bucks. So you know you've done everything correctly. This is centered, dead center in the middle. And pour yourself a beer, glass of champagne, celebrate a job well done, and you're ready to go do some more work, just like I am right now. So thank you guys for your time. Hopefully this helped somebody out. If it did, uh, drop me a comment, say thank you, hit like. I love that stuff, love to hear from you guys or share a link to whatever you're working on with your Hobart MIG welder. So I'm gonna put a link in the description to the liner. I get mine from Tractor Supply, they're $37. You can use cheaper ones. Uh, you can find this exact same liner. This is um, part number 196139. You can find this exact same liner, which is $37 at Tractor Supply. You can find that online for about $30, $31. Um, I did find it for $31 with free shipping, but uh, it would have taken a couple weeks to get here. So for me, I just ran a truck supply and got it because I got work to do. I have also heard online unofficially that the Vulcan liners from Harbor Freight will fit this machine. And I looked at them and they're really similar, but not identical. And they're like 10 bucks. So um, to me, I'm just not going to gamble and waste time on driving to the store and spending $10 coming back and putting it in and having it not work right. So I just spent $37. I feel like it's twenty dollars is not the end of the world, but if you're super cheap, you might be able to use a generic one online. Um, the Vulcan ones do not say anywhere on them that they fit Hobart welders, which they probably can't because Hobart wouldn't let them say that. So Charlie's in here sniffing around. Hey, what are you doing in here? And um, I think we're done with the video. So again, see you guys on the next one. Let's get to work.